exalted over all. Let all creation sing to you, our risen King. Jesus, exalted over all. Oh, 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 oh. exalted over all. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about knowledge, while we take a look at the story of some wise guys who went on an epic road trip. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. I want to know what's in this box. So do I. You mean you didn't wrap it? Nope. It's a leftover gift I forgot about. There's no from on the gift tag. Yeah, I don't know who left it. So open it already. Uh-uh. What? I want to see if I can gain some knowledge about what's inside without opening it. Wait, there's a word for that. Forensics. 
Forensics are scientific tests or techniques used in connection with the detection of crime. Wait, this isn't a crime scene, but it is a mystery. Where do we start? Well, I'm gonna start gaining knowledge about what's inside by using my eyes. It's wrapped perfectly, and the handwriting is kind of swirly. So it's from a girl. That doesn't mean it's from a girl! Handwriting challenge! Yours is swirly-ish. Well, yours is barely readable. That's true. What's next? Next, I'm gonna gain knowledge with my ears. Aha! Uh -huh. What rattles like that? Mmm, maracas, birdseed, snakes. <laughs> so whatever it is, it rattles and it's from a girl. Maybe from a girl. Eyes, ears. <laughs> I'm gonna gain some knowledge with my nose. Wait. I'm getting something. Salmon kibble? Sorry, I let my dog lick my face. Ew. Okay, so we've done eyes, ears, and nose to gain knowledge. Taste! I am not licking that box. You're running out of ideas. Too bad we can't do an x-ray. Can we field trip to urgent care? I don't think they take this kind of walk in. <gasps> Let's drop it! Ready? Ready. Same rattle as before. Rattles, maybe from a girl. Doesn't smell, doesn't break. What's next in our search for knowledge? Heat it. Heat it? What's that gonna do? I don't know. I think it's time to up our experiment game. And I think it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back to relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, hey Erica. Erica. Hey y'all! So, we don't exactly know how the wise men discovered what the star meant. Look at that new star rising in the west! It's so bright! Surely it means something. But, they may have known about Daniel, who had been taken as a captive from Jerusalem to Babylon hundreds of years before. Daniel had been an advisor to the king and would have shared the Jewish scriptures and promises from God with his fellow advisors. Look here, in the Jewish scroll of Numbers, a star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. A brand new baby king. Whether the wise men figured out what the star meant from ancient writings, or God spoke to them directly, they did not waste time in doing something with their newfound knowledge. The wise men packed up supplies and gifts and set out on what would have been an epic road trip across the desert. They followed the star for months or even longer over ancient roads and through steep mountain passes. At last, they arrived in the city of Jerusalem. Where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we've come to worship him. Word of these exotic visitors quickly made its way to King Herod at the palace. Now, Herod had been appointed ruler of Judea by Roman Caesar, but the position was not secure. The last thing he wanted was some upstart new king to challenge him. So he called for the Jewish priests and teachers of the law. Where's this Jewish Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem. <laughs> How do you know? The prophet Micah, your majesty. He says, but you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. 
He will rule my people Israel like a shepherd. Oh, well, I see. Have these, uh, wise men come see me, huh? Keep it on the down low. The wise men soon arrived at the palace. King Herod asked to know when the star had appeared and tried to put on a good face on his fear and brewing anger. I want you to go to Bethlehem for me. Search for this child and report back when you find him. Then I can go and, um, worship him. <laughs> King Herod had no intention of honoring Jesus. In fact, he wanted to get rid of him, but the wise men didn't know this. They went on their way and were filled with joy when they saw the star again. It went ahead of them until it stopped right over the place where Jesus and his family were staying. Look, it stopped. This must be the place. I'll knock. The wise men were welcomed into the home by Mary and Joseph. By this time, Jesus was a young child, and the wise men offered him beautiful gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were not your average baby shower gifts. In fact, these were the kind of gifts that would be given to a powerful king. It was just one more sign of who Jesus was and would become. At last, the wise men left Jesus to begin their long journey home. They planned to return to Herod as they had been asked, but thankfully, God spoke to the wise men in a dream and warned them not to go back to Herod. So, the wise men chose a different road for their trip home. The end. That Herod dude was a bad dude. But thankfully, the wise men got the message. When God gave them new information, they changed their plans. Just like when they saw the new star in the first place. Exactly. The wise men didn't sit around wandering. They took action to discover what the star was about. And their search led them to God's very own son, Jesus. So what's our part in the story? Good question. The wise men traveled hundreds of miles over months and months to discover more about God. But we can begin learning more about who God is right now, today. The Apostle Paul wrote, Ever since the world was created, it has been possible to see the qualities of God that are not seen. Those things can be seen in what has been made. So all the things we can find in nature can tell us more about God and all the things we study through science. That's right. I mean, just look at a leaf under a microscope or a bug or a human cell. They are amazing. You will be in awe of what God created. Or go outside and look at the night sky. God made vast galaxies, millions of miles apart, filled with millions of stars. Our God is so big. So big. You can learn about God through the people God created too. Your classmates or neighbors. They're all made in God's image and show a little bit of who God is. So stay curious about everything. Yeah, and ask a lot of questions. <laughs> you got it. There is no end to what you can discover about God. See you next time. Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. Never stop searching for what's true. I still want to know what's inside. And I think I know. How? I just got a text from my Aunt Beth asking how I liked her gift. This gift? She always sends me a movie streaming gift card and microwave popcorn. See, we should have heated it. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. Can we heat it now? I'm hungry. Sure. <laughs>